a lot to have one waiting. Any luck? Nah. Too many wounds. There isn't a caribou left in the whole country. You have a drink? No, thanks. Well, private stock, eh? Don't mind if I do. Right. Good luck. Well, I'm gonna need it. It's ah, more like it. Travis is down at the crossing. Yeah. They tell me somebody murdered a squaw down at Fort Nelson. You haven't been around there yourself by any chance. Sorry. What about you? What's up, Riv? Travis had a passenger with him. A lad from the outside. His first trip north. A rank Chichaco, eh? I doubt if he'd ever seen a dog team before. Very presentable chap for all that. Young, something like yourself, full of hope and all that rot. Yeah, the difference being that he flew in and I'm walking out tomorrow. Perhaps. Tomorrow. Travis wouldn't permit his lad to go up the porcupine alone. Too close to the ice break up, you know. So Travis had to escort him up to a certain canyon. It was a very curious business. So Corpus Jim and I followed along to see what was up. Yeah, well, what's all this got to do with me? There's a commodity involved. A commodity which explains your presence in this blighted wilderness. A commodity we sweat and starve and barter our immortal souls for. Gold. A little spot of 9,000 ounces. 9,000 ounces? Stacked up in moose hide pokes like big fat sausages. You saw it? No, but it's there for the taking. Whose dust is it? I'll tell you nothing until we're on the ground. You join forces with me, take your orders from me, and take half the winnings. Shall I count you in? your pardon. No, why don't you give Frain or some one of the other lads over there a chance at it? That swine. Do you mean to say that after four lean years, when you're leaving here empty-handed, penniless, that you refuse... How do you like yours, Riv? Pretty black? Well, there may be people like that. I've read about them. But you're not one of them. Down, Tolo. Down. Don't you know that your share would be $150,000? Look, Riv, beans. Incredible. Hi, Steve. Riv, we're going to give Steve a farewell party. It's a brawl. Make yourself right at home. Gene, if you must go, he's eat a juco. Let's have some supper. Beans. Beans. I never want to see another bean as long as I live. <laughs> Not unless you're hungry. But good, good jolly good friend. Good jolly good friend. Good jolly good friend.
I seem to remember going to the door, all right. I heard a wolf howling. Oh, no, that was earlier, Steve, before the beans blew up. But why should I want to shoot Travis? But, Steve, you think he's a wolf. But I wouldn't shoot until I knew it was. You were quite drunk, old chap. I wasn't that drunk. Or was I? Now, listen, son. Do you remember stumbling over my feet? I think so. Yes, I, I think I remember that. My gun was standing right there by the door. Okay. I remember the wind blowing across me. The door was wide open, and there you stood. With this, I dragged you back. You were fighting mad. Crazy! Well, okay, boys. I guess I did it. Well, so now what? It's kind of tough on Steve, but the law's involved. We're all involved. Never mind us. What about Steve? We ain't gonna turn him over to the law. That's all right, Shorty. Well, it was an accident. It was just one of those things that could have happened to any of us. We ain't gonna see him hang, are we? Oh, not at all. I knew it. The lad with the ideas, good old Riv. Have you got her figured out? Perhaps. We don't want Bentley's neck to stretch. Even Mr. Bentley would find it inconvenient, I'm sure. But if we turn him over, he'll certainly hang. So why not chip into a little pot, dog team, equipment and whatnot, and let him run for it? What, have us all nailed for aiding and abetting? Oh, now, don't get me wrong, boys. I'm for Steve, too. Yeah, but for good old Frain, first, last, and always. Shh. Or it's the truth. This is a law-abiding camp, of course. We'll escort Bentley to the crossing under guard. But on the way, unfortunately, the prisoner escapes. You oh, got it. That's a fine idea. Oh, shut Steve up. Steve escapes? But what then? Where does he go? It's a big country. East. To the porcupine over the border. Well, who's going to escort him to the crossing? Not you, brother. Well, that pleasure, with your permission, gentlemen, will be mine. 
What's the use, Riv? I'll give myself up. You're in no condition to decide your own destiny. As a matter of fact, who is? Igloo. This isn't where I escape, is it, Riv? That's the way to the border. You're not going across the border, Bentley. You're going north. After the hue and cry is over, you'll come out furtively, cross the porcupine, and head south toward the Yukon by way of McPherson Pass. Well, I'd never make it to the Yukon. They'd trap me below the pass. I'll be waiting for you there with a plane. We'll fly out together with the gold. A little spot of 9,000 ounces. So that's it. Precisely. Look facts in the face, Bentley. There's murder behind you. Nothing as bad lies ahead. I can still say no. Not after last night's unfortunate episode. Shall we proceed? You recall the Chichaco that Travis escorted up the river yesterday? I followed him up here. His trail ended yonder in that open water. I got here too late, Bentley. I buried him over there in that crevasse. He had a letter in his pocket. You've heard of an old-timer named McCoy? Boomer McCoy? Yes. Since a year ago last spring, he's been up yonder taking a really impressive amount of gold out of the ground. 9,000 ounces wrapped up in big, fat pokes like sausages. Now, it appears that old Boomer McCoy has a son up there with him named Pete. Shrinking, ineffectual lad, one gathers. Here is McCoy's problem. How to transport nearly half a ton of the stuff down to the porcupine and onto the Yukon. It's a gold-hungry region. There are wolves abroad. Yeah, like Ravenhill, like Steve Bentley. So McCoy wrote a letter to the son of his old partner. This unfortunate lad here, Matt Donovan. Asking young Donovan to come up and help him get it out of the country. So I become Matt Donovan, eh? Exactly. Neither old Boomer nor his son Pete have ever met him. You'll fit precisely into their picture of him. Young and full of hope and all that rot. Here is your passport. Wait for them at the base of the cliff. They'll accept you into the bosom of the family, as it were, and you'll escort them and the little sausages down to McPherson Pass. They're trusting me, and I cut their throats. You've other arrangements in mind, perhaps? Not after last night. But get this, Riv. If the going gets too tough for my conscience, what's left of it, I'll withdraw. I'm warning you. And as an equally sporting gesture, let me tell you this, my lad. Fail me, and you'll hang. No dog. He goes with me. The 
that you're a Chichaco. How could Matt Donovan have picked up a dog? I'll manage that when I come to it. I'll be waiting for you at McPherson Pass. So long, Riv. Cheerio. seen a thing. We can't speak their language where Chichaco is remembered. Donovan, aren't you? I'm Mary McCoy. Pete, if you don't mind. How are you, Matt? Well, I didn't know. I had no idea you were... A... Dad was afraid to tell you the truth. He was afraid you mightn't come. Why does it make such a difference? Oh, of course not. But... Yes? Oh, it'll be all right. Sure, <laughs> we'll get along. Pardon me. It's not fair to talk in a language you don't understand. But my boys only know a few words of English. <laughs> Sounds like a gargling contest, doesn't it? They were wondering where you got the dog. And how a Chichaco knows enough to sit between the fire and the wall. Oh, I've roughed it a lot in the outside, in the mountains. Uh, I've even driven a dog team down in Yellowstone to help pay my way through school. I tried to tell him I picked up Tolo there, down river. He was alone too, so I just brought him along. I'm glad you made it safely, Matt. Our camp's up there on the flat. We'll stay there tonight. We'll probably make it to the mine by tomorrow afternoon. The supper's ready. You'll find Charlie a good cook. Good. It was in a pocket. Concentrated, you know. Dad dreamed of a strike like that. I guess all old-timers do. Well, he's got it now. It's out of the ground, at least. It's a long way to the Yukon. Dad thought we ought to cross Porcupine, up above the Big Bend, then across McPherson Pass. Dad gave it to Charlie years ago. He'll never part with it. It's pretty, isn't it? Yes. 
Why didn't your dad come down himself? Why did he send you to meet me? He's dead, Matt. He died three days ago. We buried him up at the mine. Oh. He was dying when he sent for you. And he knew it. That's what complicates it, Matt. Good night. Good night, Pete. You must have had quite a crew of natives working the ground. Where are they? I had to let them go just before I went down to meet you. All except Charlie and Pelly. They promised Dad they wouldn't leave me. Why shouldn't I have done it? Well, news of a strike like this travels pretty fast, so I've heard. They'll have had time to get down to the crossing. Then they'll talk. Oh, I shouldn't have done it. Listen, let's not stop to eat. Let's leave right away. Didn't I hear you mention an apple pie you baked just before you came down to meet me? All right, boys, mush out there. They worry about Tolo being excess baggage. They think he'll eat too much food. But don't you worry. I have a little excess baggage of my own. Oh, Tolo won't eat much. And he's a brave dog. He's got the heart of a lion, haven't you, boy?
like wallpaper. <laughs> Dad liked them. I liked them too, Matt. We were going to travel. California, Florida, anywhere there was a lot of sunlight, where it was warm. Look, my full name's Matthew Stephen Donovan. Call me Steve. Most of my friends do. Steve? That's a nice name, too. You know, Steve, you haven't mentioned the gold since you got here. Well, that's right. About time we started thinking about it, isn't it? Well, let's load it and get underway. Yeah, we better. Manich y Kosegich Unano. Exenyecho. They look like big fat sausages, don't they? Doesn't it thrill you at all, Steve? It's a gold. And here it won't even buy a beefsteak. Well, let's get it on the sled. <laughs> <laughs> Steve men, dog teams. Do we run for it, Steve? No. If they're okay, we won't have to. If they're not, they'd run us down like rabbits anyway. I'll go up and meet them, and you stay here ready to start if I give a signal. And that'll mean take the outfits and head for the porcupine fast. I'll try to hold them here. But oh, what about you? Explain it to your boys, and if you have to start, keep going. layout you got here, Steve. Another half hour and you'd been on your way with your new playmates. And a fortune to boot. McCoy's native scattered news of the strike to the four winds. You counting Frayne in? I'm counting myself in. And these boys will back my play blind. All you want to do is to get out of the country. Take your outfit and travel. Pete! Just relax, Frame. If you move a finger or tell your boys anything, you'll be the first. My boys will mow down like wheat. Uh, but you'll be first. Bentley has something, old boy. Let's be reasonable. There's a stampede snapping at our heels, so let's pool our resources and get out of their way. If you're not satisfied with, uh, with a third, we can discuss the matter later at the pass. What pass? Rat River, of course. We'll meet stampeders there. McPherson is better. McPherson. Very well. McPherson passes. Well, Bentley, whatever your scheme, it appears to have fallen through. One of the McCoys and two natives are headed this way. Younger McCoy, no doubt. Frail lad, eh? Wait there, Pete. Then it's a deal? Three ways. But don't you two jokers get any funny ideas. What is this, Bentley? A woman? Boomer McCoy is dead. Pete's his daughter. Now, you can see that simplifies things. Yes. I can see more than that. Well, Pete, you got a little restless, eh? Sorry we palavered so long. Miss McCoy, this is Mr. Frayne, Mr. Ravenhill. How are you, miss? It's a pleasure, Miss McCoy. Frayne and I casually met Donovan at the crossing the other day. No end surprised to meet him here. No more surprised than he, I fancy. 
Donovan explained the layout missing. It's been mighty tough on you. In fact, we're going to lend a hand and see you across Porcupine. Is that what you've agreed upon, Steve? Yes. Mighty nice of these boys, too. Good enough. I'll send one of my teams ahead, and you folks can take the middle, and Raven Hill and me will bring up the rear. Come on, Raven. They don't trust your friends. Wolves. Yeah, well, they are. Why the devil didn't you run for it when you had the chance? Because I could see there was something wrong. You stayed and made things worse. Then they're not your friends. <laughs> They'd cut my throat and yours, too, for a lot less than's on that sled. Why the devil can't women do what they're told once in a while? I couldn't go off and leave you. Well, you'd be in a lot less of a jam than you are now if you had. As it is, we've got to play their game and wait for the breaks. Thanks to you. <laughs> Explain it to your boys. Tell them we've got to stay together to play the part that we're all friends, but to be ready for anything. Charlie, tell it. Uma, have it going with car to it? It's all you got there. You got it all to go, is it good? Are you not sure? What about Topsy and Turvey? I wish they were all we had to worry about. You got the stuff all loaded, Steve? It's all lashed down. Well, seems to be all right. Let's get going. Don't only get going. Okay. All locked up. we get to the pass. Maybe you've got a bright idea. I know this is all my fault. I wish you wouldn't keep reminding me of it. I was only trying to help you. What do you know about me? Nothing. You only met me yesterday. I know that until these men came, you were kind and considerate. Now you're... you're... That's right. Maybe I'm showing my true colors now. Maybe I'm playing on your trusting nature. How do you know I'm not one of these fellows? That's ridiculous. Where a quarter of a million's concerned, nothing's ridiculous. Steve! Oh, forget it, will you? Let me try to... I noticed Ravenhill talking to you back there on the trail. Did he have anything in particular to say? Nothing much. You know how cynical he is about everybody's motives. <laughs> yeah, including his own. Don't let it bother you, Steve. My dad used to say, you don't ask questions in a poker game. The showdown tells the story. Good night, Steve. Good night. Oh, 
Steve! Stay, Tolo. Make some excuse to leave us alone for a moment. What have you got to say that I can't hear? You can't drive this lad, Frayne. I have the means of leading him. There are certain spiritual values involved. Oh, spiritual values. Fancy that, Governor. All right. He's your meat. Has uh, your attachment for Miss McCoy suddenly blinded you to certain realities that we discussed at Donovan's grave? No, they're clearer than ever. That has a suspiciously noble tinge. Let me bring you up to date, Bentley. I sent some messages over the shortwave set at the crossing yesterday. I not only reported that you had escaped upriver, I also notified the mountain police to wait for you at the Canadian border, just in case you decided to make a run for it. Both ends against the middle, eh, Riv? I always cover my bets. Yeah, I just found that out. Now, Frayne is in line for the moment. But somewhere just short of the pass, it will occur to his twisted mind. To count me out. Yes. And Ravenhill. It's obvious what his next step is. So why spit with anybody? You and I and Miss McCoy are walking literally in the shadow of death. So you and I copper our bets, eh? Precisely. Events have made it necessary for me to bargain with Frayne temporarily. But our agreement still holds, provided you keep your head. Now, I prefer your cooperation. But fail me and I proceed alone. Do you understand? You've made it quite clear. Close your eyes to rosy cheeks and dewy lips, my lad. At least until we reach the pass. Spiritual values. <laughs> Huh? Pleasant dreams, Mr. Donovan. Right, Tolo. It's the showdown that tells the story. What indeed? Should I weep for you, Frayne? You know, I like Stampeders. They're usually fine fellows. What do you mean, you like Stampeders? Whoever that is, it means grief for us. Precisely. The suggestion is that we keep an eye on our gold. Yes. Yes. Should I say at this point, so happy to have met you?
Why did Ravenhill do that? He saw a chance to save his own scalp, which makes it tougher on us. Oh, Steve, what are we going to do? Gamble, I guess. Everything on a single play. Only this time, Pete, obey orders. No arguments. Wait here. Charlie, Pelly. Pika. Charlie, Pelly, Pete, Yukon. Come on! Raven Hill is gone. He slugged me and made a run for it. Yeah, I saw it. Let him go. Let him go, and the stampeders are coming. You can see their fires below. Beyond the canyon? Yes, on the far side of the creek. We'll have to go back. Wait a minute. There may be others behind us. If they're on the far side of the creek, then we're still in the clear. It's a regular maze in those canyons. We'll split up just as soon as we get below the first fork. Start them up. I'll follow you. We'll be down below in two minutes. Okay, you and Pete ride Pelly Sled. Well, the gold sled's heavy. We're used to handling the team. We'll take it down. Well, won't I be right behind you? You'll be right ahead of me. Can I turn around? Use your head, Freen. We're wasting time. Okay, but you stay close to us. You just stay out of our way. Start them up. Here, Arthur. <laughs> Listen, Pete, we're going to make a run for it down there. The main canyon goes on, but we're going to swing to the right. Don't argue when the break comes, just do as Charlie says. But can't they follow us? No, I'll hold Frayne back, but you and the boys keep going to the Yukon. What about you? We've figured every angle. You just obey orders. <laughs> Slip, Pete. Do as I say. Steve, I won't let you do it. We'll all stay. Listen, Pete. My name isn't Steve Donovan. It's Steve Bentley. The night before I met you, I killed a man. I went up there where I met you just to rob you, and now I'm giving you a chance. Charlie and Pelly will see you safely to the Yukon. Mounties, you know. Tell your other natives to come over here. Kick the block, Casey. I'm not the only one in this. What about Bentley up there? He's the one that killed Travers. We know all about that. Come along. Why, you lying double crosser, you. The mills of the gods grind slowly, eh, Frayne?
Hello, Riv. Come on in. Pull up a chair. Where's Miss McCoy? Gone to the Yukon. Outside. Beyond our reach. That's an odd statement. In fact, pardon me, incredible. By the way, Riv, why did you make a run for it up there? Eh? Oh, that. Oh, elementary bit of strategy. Frayne had to be lured down to where the Mounties are waiting. Mounties? Yes. Didn't you know those canyons are on the Canadian side of the line? Yeah, I knew the line was close. So the Mounties have Frayne. He's practically gibbering, of course. It seems some chap murdered a squaw down Fort Nelson way. And you knew that from the first. And you intended to safeguard Miss McCoy's interest from the first, to send her to safety. Just take it, Riv. You're only losing the gold. You actually expect me to believe such a childish story? It's the truth. <laughs> You're losing your masterful touch, my lad. Or is the lady blundering into the picture too soon? Steve. Oh, I couldn't go on without you. But you can't go with me, Pete. I am going with you, Steve. I hate to intrude and all that, but where's the gold, Bentley? Where's the gold, says Mr. Ravenhill? Charlie and Tully are hiding it, miles and miles away. We... We couldn't take it with us where we have to go. You were actually heading outside. You were safe at last, and yet you came back. Because you love him. Yes. And you defied Frayne and me and risked hanging and death. I believe you. I believe you both. There are people like you. My apologies, Miss McCoy. Congratulations, Bentley. Don't go over the border, you two. Head for the Yukon, the outside. You're both young and full of hope and all that rot. You're not wanted for murder, Bentley. It was convenient having you think so, but Frayne killed the deputy marshal. I saw it. He killed a squaw, too. So, you're as free as air. Do you understand what he means? I knew it down deep. We'll invite you to the wedding, Rick. Thank <laughs> you.